Okay, great. Thank, thank you, Adam. So w welcome everybody to the monthly SEAM webinar. Um, my, my name is Peter Kingshot and I'm a Deputy Director of, of SEAM and also a Chief Investigator. For those of you who are not familiar with, with SEAM, if you're new to this uh, forum, SEAM is a uh, an Australian Research Council funded training centre uh, on surface engineering for advanced materials involving um, a number of industry partners and, and also uh, university uh, chief investigators. So it's my delight today to um, introduce you to uh, Elena Ivanova, who will present uh, on um, innovative bacterocidal nanostructured surfaces. But before I hand over to Elena, I'd like to just give you a little bit of uh, uh, information ab about her. So Elena is a distinguished professor at, at RMIT in, in the School of uh, Science. She is a, a world renowned researcher in, in this particular field and has won uh, numerous awards. Um, several include uh, the Morrison Rogasser Award from the American Society for Microbiology and also the Australian uh, Museum uh, Eureka Award in 2017, based on some of the things she'll talk about today. She is, is widely published. Uh, she's got a magnificent publication record, over 300 papers, 17,000 citations, and a H-index um, of, of 63. This includes uh, numerous books and book chapters and, and, and a number of patents. Um, her main research interests are focusing on design, fabrication, <laughs> operation of uh, micro devices, uh, attachment of biomolecules, uh, and looking at um, microorganisms in micro and nano environments, um, amongst other things. Um, so she'll present uh, some of this work today. Just to um, remind you or let you know if you have any questions um, these will be asked by myself at the end of Elena's seminar and you can write them in the uh, Q&A section um, in, in the uh, the Teams model, module you should be able to see that. So without further ado I'd like to hand over to Elena and say thank you very much Elena for presenting uh, today. Thank you very much, Peter, for such nice introduction. And indeed, this is my pleasure to um, talk about uh, our work today. I just would like to mention that, of course, it's a huge collaborative effort of many talented students and uh, brilliant academics. Um, just would like to start. <clears throat> hello, uh, hello again, everyone. And uh, like I mentioned, um, just honored and greatly appreciate uh, this opportunity to share our work with you today. Um, I, um, a few years ago, I moved to RMIT University. However, I would like to acknowledge Swinburne University of Technology, where I worked for 18 years. And in fact, the work I'm presenting today started at Swinburne University of Technology. Um, why do we need uh, antibacterial surfaces? So in the introduction, we will go through the problem of antibiotic resistance, bacterial colonization of surfaces and biofilm formation, and uh, uh, consider what uh, numerous research groups are currently designed to prevent uh, biofilm formation and minimize antibiotic resistance. Then we look at how insect wings could be a potential solution to these problems and consider native antibacterial nanostructured surfaces in 
and uh, their biomimetic synthetic analogs. Then we'll go through several examples of bactericidal nanopatterns to realize the multitude of bactericidal action of these surfaces. So far, the bactericidal effect uh, through physical rupturing of bacterial cells can be achieved by a fabrication of rigid, flexible and sharp nano features of different geometries. Um, back in 1945, Alexander Fleming predicted that microbes could develop resistance to antibiotics, saying we are at the forefront of a new battle faced with dangerous superbugs that are impervious to our best antibiotics. 70 years on, their predictions have become reality and we face a significant health care challenge. The emergence of superbugs resistant to all available antibiotics are increasingly being reported by researchers across the world. With a great chance of fatality due to infection, a major concern is that antimicrobial resistance could lead to a post-antibiotic era, a time when antibiotics would no longer work. Sorry. Apologies, some, some. Oh. Um. Oh. Oh, my apologies. For some reason, that probably just connects directly to the uh, to the um, website. Uh, what I wanted to say here that uh, uh, implant associated infections is number one cause of implant failure. Um, and uh, that's why I uh, um, included a quote from Nature News that in the United States, antimicrobial resistance causes more than 2 million infections and 23,000 deaths per year, uh, the equivalent of a, a Boeing 747 crashing each week. Economic cost of antibiotic resistance expected to reach 100 trillion United States dollars by 2050, given the current trend. Um, Implant-associated um, infections are extremely hard to treat due to antibiotic resistance, which develops when microorganisms by, uh, forming a biofilm are protected and no longer respond to a drug that used to uh, kill them. Um, on the scanning electron uh, micrograph on the top right, you see an example of a, uh, Staphylococcus pseudointermediates biofilm, which was formed on orthopedic bone screw in a dog. Uh, in the uh, movie before, which was recorded in my lab, um, you can see how quickly Staph aureus or uh, golden staff colonizing the surface of titanium implant. The biofilm can be formed in just 24 hours. Um, indeed, bacteria survive in a biofilm, which is a complex three-dimensional structured community of microbes using a matrix of secrete extracellular polymeric substances, uh, so-called uh, EPS. Bacteria in biofilms are highly resistant to many antibacterial treatments and developed resistant to antibiotics. Uh, the um, uh, schematic and movie shows the stages of biofilm formation from when bacteria first come into contact with the surface and begin to attach, start to secrete EPS. And with a growing number of bacteria, the biofilm is growing and uh, uh, had a particular structure reaching maturation stage and some cells are released uh, to start the cycle again elsewhere. Once the biofilm form, it's usually quite difficult to, um, and expensive to remove it because uh, the EBS matrix provides protection, particularly from antimicrobial 
uh, chemicals. So uh, the preventing this first stage as the initial attachment of bacteria to prevent initial attachment of bacteria was the motivation for our work. Intensive efforts have been focused on the fabrication of antibacterial surfaces or on the improvement of uh, the performance of existing antibacterial surfaces. I thought I mentioned here Nobel laureate Joshua Lidberg, who once wrote, the future of humanity and microbes will evolve as episodes of our wits versus our genes. Overall, antimicrobial surfaces are capable of reducing the extent of attachment and proliferation of bacteria and can be divided into two large categories, antibiofoling, which would repel bacterial cells, and bactericidal, which would kill bacteria upon contact. Bactericidal properties are, um, could be due to bactericidal effect of um, some particular ions such as silver ions, antimicrobial peptides, antibiotics or low molecular weight compounds, whereas antifouling surfaces may possess some photocatalytic properties or uh, antifouling co uh, coatings. Unfortunately, some drawbacks such as toxicity, non-uniformity of coatings, decrease in efficiency uh, over time, environmental and health concerns, and of course, microbial resistance to antimicrobial agents are associated with these approaches. Several naturally existing surfaces, such as insect wings and plant leaves, are capable of maintaining a contaminant-free status despite the abundance of potential contaminants in their surrounding environments. These self-cleaning properties arise from extreme degrees of superhydrophobicity, uh, water droplets, in fact, repelling by uh, surface and sweeping away potential contaminating particles. The superhydrophobicity of the surfaces is uh, due to a combination of chemical composition of the material and nanostructured pattern. Inspired by the self-cleaning effect, our initial work focused on cicada wing. Cicadas are fascinating insects, famous for their loud songs. You all know this very well. Uh, there are actually over 3,000 species of cicadas in the world and over 200 species in Australia. Usually 20 to 70 um, year periodical cicadas emerge in large numbers to breed in summer. The wing surface of um, uh, cicada um, saltoda claripinis uh, superhydrophobic with the water contact angles between 173 to 163 to 173 degrees, as you can see on the uh, vetability uh, map, which was um, created by one of our uh, PhD students. It's a quite hard work. Um, The, uh, the wing surface is covered with thousands of pillars that are only about 200 nanometers tall and 60 nanometers in diameter. What you see on the movie is atomic force microscopy scan of cicada wing um, in the nanometer scale. Initially, we thought that since the wings are superhydrophobic, the bacteria will be bouncing from the surface as water droplets do. Surprisingly, we found lots of bacteria on the surface of cicada wing. Our investigations into the interactions of Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacterial cells with cicada wings revealed uh, that the wing surface was not really effective at repelling the bacteria, as many cells were able to adhere uh, to the wing surface. However, as you see on the scanning electron micrographs, all the cell morphology and red color on the confocal micrographs indicating the propidium died inside the cells implied that the cells are dead. 
IFM studies were performed at Melbourne Centre uh, for Nanofabrication to detect in situ rupturing of bacterial cells. An IFM in this experiment, an IFM tip was placed on the top of a bacterial cell and a constant force maintained as the cell sunk into the nanopillar array. The cell was measured to sink approximately 200 nanometer before finally rupturing. And you can see that's a perfect match with the height of the nanopillars on cicada wing. Using a direct plate counting technique, it was estimated that the number of viable cells remaining in the suspensions was decreased by 96.4% per square centimeter in just um, over 30 minutes. In order to understand whether the surface chemistry is a contributing factor towards bacteria, bactericidal effect, uh, the interactions of bacteria with gold-coated wings were investigated. The gold coating layer was less than 10 nanometers, so that the nanopattern of the wing was not altered. And um, mm, uh, that was confirmed by IFM surface roughness analysis. As it can be seen on the scanning mm, electron micrographs, the gold coated wings remain bactericidal to Pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa bacterial cells. And uh, that uh, um, was a uh, clear confirmation that the surface chemistry is not important in the bactericidal effect of cicada wings, but rather it is topography that is a dominant factor. A biophysical model describing the mechanism of action observed on the surfaces of cicada wing was developed in collaboration with a group of theoretical physicists, Dr. Vladimir Baulin and uh, Dr. Uh, Sergei Pogodin. Initially, we thought that the cells, the cell is uh, somewhat pierced by the nanopillars. However, if you take into consideration the thickness of the cell membrane, which is in the range of four to six nanometers, and the diameter of the pillar, which is in the range of 60 nanometers, it is clear that the membrane is actually suspended and stretched. It begins to rupture in the regions between the pillars and collapses onto the surface. Three-dimensional representation of the model uh, inter model interactions between a single um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa cell on a cicada wing surface was created by our former master student uh, Veselin Bashkovich, who actually worked uh, for the Hollywood company lately, and um, I think now he established his own uh, company. So uh, what we uh, found is that cicada wing um, do not actually possess any appreciable anti-fouling ability with respect to Pseudomonas aeruginosa. However, the net result is somewhat similar to that the bacteria are prevented from proliferating on the surface. It's important to know that surfaces such as cicada wings are capable of killing only gram-negative bacteria. Uh, gram-positive cells were not killed on the surfaces of cicada wings, and uh, that is most likely due to the uh, great rigidity of gram-positive cells. You may remember that the thick layer of peptidoglycan um, contributes to the cell's rigidity. As you all know, uh, there is a great diversity of naturally existing surfaces that are capable of maintaining a contaminant-free status. Where, be, uh, but did you know that there are billion insects in this world, and that's almost 170 million insects for every one person on Earth? Out of this enormous abundance of species, our next object will dragonflies belonging to the order Odonata. They actually only 7,000 species in this world.
And however, the dragonfly wing um, patterns appear to be rather different to that of the cicada. The extensive bactericidal activity was displayed by the wing epicutical. The cellular integrity of all gram positive and gram negative and also uh, basal spores appear to be significantly disrupted by the nanopilus present on the uh, dragonfly epicutical. This type of the nanopattern provides an opportunity for a new approach to mechanoresponsive microbiology, whereby the cell responds to the physical interaction, uh, interaction forces of the surface structures. We also investigated the nature of interactions of giant uni <coughs> unilamellar vesicles or groups as a simplified cell membrane model with the surface of the wings of two dragonflies. Uh, dragonfly species source from uh, Victoria and uh, Terra Alta regions of Catalonia in Spain. When exposed to both natural and gold-coated wing surfaces, the goofs adsorbed on the surface exhibited significant deformation in the process of membrane um, rupture as observed using confocal scanning microscopy and cryo-scanning electron microscopy. The membrane tension generated by the nanostructures present uh, <coughs> on the wing surfaces was estimated as being in excess of 6.75. Uh, mm, I think it's micronewtons. Um, and that was the first experimental estimate of such uh, mechanobactericidal um, surfaces. <clears throat> um, nanostructure surfaces that mimic insect wing nanostructure uh, could potentially be used for the surfaces of uh, medical devices and other surfaces that have problems with biofouling. Black silicon is the fuel synthetic analog of dragonfly uh, surfaces, was successfully fabricated here at Swinburne under guidance Professor Solius Judicadis by using reactive um, iron etching technique. On this slide, I just included a schematic showing the fabrication of uh, black silicon using plasma-assisted reactive iron etching. Silicon wafer undergo alternative uh, rounds of etching and deposition in order to form the high aspect ratio nano features. And on this slide, you uh, can uh, follow a structural comparison of black silicon surfaces and dragonfly diplocoid by punctata. I just would like to uh, mention that all this um, uh, three-dimensional uh, visualization uh, were produced by uh, Vesely and Vanya Bashkovic. Um, on this slide, I included a summary of uh, characteristic properties of cicada, dragonfly, and black silicon um, uh, surfaces properties, such as availability, surface chemical composition, height of the nano features, and corresponding bactericidal efficiency against different cell types. As um, you can see, the uh, biomimetic surfaces can actually achieve quite impressive bactericidal um, activity. Um, on uh, this uh, FIBA CM micrographs, you see the biointerface of the uh, bacterial cells and uh, um, black silicon surfaces. Over the last five years, various uh, antibacterial and specifically bactericidal surfaces are being developed featuring different nanopatterns that mimic the deadly action of insect wings. But we're just only uh, beginning to unravel the mysteries of how they work. 
uh, in our recent review, uh, we have detailed exactly how these uh, patterns destroy bacteria and could distinguish uh, three different modes of bactericidal action by stretching, tearing uh, bacterial cells apart or slicing. Uh, in the remaining slides, I will consider a few examples of uh, uh, these uh, patterns. Uh, what we learn already is that bacterial cell rupture occurs by continuing suspension of the bacterial cell membrane on the nanopattern substratum, leading to stretching beyond the elastic limit of the membrane. But what will happen to bacterial cell if uh, it will land on high aspect ratio nanopattern? In collaboration with colleagues from Cambridge University, Professor Michael DeWolder, we studied the bactericidal activity of exceptionally high aspect ratio, um, 100 to 3000, of vertically aligned carbon nanotubes. And what we found is that up to 99.3% of Pseudomonas aeruginosa and 84.9% of stuff aureus bacterial cells were effectively killed on uh, one micron tall vertically aligned um, carbon nanotubes. In fact, such high aspect ratio of carbon nanotubes imparts extreme flexibility, which enhancing uh, the elastic energy storage in carbon nanotubes as they bend in contact with bacteria. To explain this bactericidal performance, our colleagues, theoretical physicists Dr. Baulin and Dr. Werner, applied Euler Bernoulli beam theory, so known as engineer's beam theory or classical beam theory, which provides a means of calculating the load carrying and deflection characteristics of beams. This theory was first applied on a large scale for the design of a well-known Eiffel Tower and the Ferris wheel in the late 19th century. The tip deflection was correlated to the amount of stored energy within the elastic pillar. In general, shorter and more rigid nanopillars must deflect less in order to store the same amount of energy as longer nanopillars, which can deflect to a greater distance. Uh, this pattern exhibited the highest bactericidal activity of carbon uh, nanotubes um, base substrata against uh, gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria, suggesting the possibility of achieving close to 100% of bacter uh, bacterial inactivation on vertically aligned carbon nanotube-based substrata. Recently, it was also demonstrated that the antibacterial activity of symmetric high aspect ratio silicon nanopillars array um, is associated with the relative flexibility of the individual nanopillars and the mechanical energy stored within the nanopillars. We showed that the lateral stretching of the cell membrane and interactions at the cell edge are induced by elastic pillar deformations that occur during bacterial adhesion and enhance mm, the bactericidal efficiency of the surfaces. Uh, what you see here also is a fib SEM site profile of the biointerface of the substrata with uh, 220, 360, and 420 nanometer pillars exposed to Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Staph aureus bacterial cells. For all samples, myelin was completed after an incubation time of 30 minutes in the presence of the uh, nanopillar silica substrata. Here, 
Here, I would like to show that the nanostructured surfaces are actually self-cleaning, uh, but not through the repelling bacterial cell. Self-cleaning effect of mechanobactericidal surfaces was studied using nanovisored nanoscience GPK atomic force microscope. Time lies allows measurements were performed in milky water at room temperature using a non-coded silicon uh, probe in um, GPK's quantitative imaging mode. As you can see here, uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacterial cells attached on 380 nanometer nanopilla featured surfaces. Um, and uh, what you see here that the number of attached cells and debris had been reduced after 150 minutes being submerged um, and scanned in uh, molecule water. The attached bacterial cells debris uh, had been shrunking and altered in terms of size and morphology. And the movie is showing the real-time observation of bacterial attachment deaths and removal of cell debris. These results um, highlight uh, that the killing and dead uh, cell detachment style may be dependent on the bacterial species and uh, surface nanopattern. The nano-engineered surface is exhibiting dense layers of sharp blade-like nanostructures uh, with 10 to 15 nanometer edges, display also very high rates of bactericidal activity. The randomly oriented knife-like nanosheets, which cover the surface in dense exposed sharp edges, are distinctly different to the nanopillar topography. Uh, therefore, the death of bacterial cells interacting with sharp nano edges can be categorized as a distinct class of the mechanobactericidal effect of nanostructured materials. Here is an example of bactericidal behavior of pristine graphene nanosheets. The results of the cell viability analysis um, indicated that up to 87.6% uh, of um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and 43% of Staph aureus cells were dead on um, uh, these um, surfaces. A um, serial a series of single chain uh, main field simulation of the interactions taking place between lipid bilayers and the graphene surfaces uh, view the distances between the respective edges uh, of the graphene plates, uh, which we are varied uh, that the simulation will performed our colleagues, uh, theoretical physicists. Um, two suggested mechanical impacts on the lipid membrane um, due to interactions with the sharp edge of graphene flake. Um, one is extraction of lipids from the membrane, which was membrane which was established previously, and the pore formation due to reorientation of lipid tails to graphene surface, where lipid heads are inverted into the pore view uh, established in this study. The results obtained in this study strongly supported the hypothesis that the bactericidal efficiency of the substrata depends on the lateral size, shape, um, and interactive angle of exposed graphene nanoflakes, which are likely to cut bacterial cell membranes with their sharp edges. Highly ordered pyrolytic uh, graphite, HOPG, uh, has attracted much attention as template for development of arrays that can be used in biotechnological applications due to its uh, highly ordered structure. Uh, since um, HOPG could mediate directional self-assembly of fatty acids and uh, palmitic acid and sialic acid were found to be uh, the two major components present on the surface of dragonfly wings. These two fatty acids were employed to investigate their crystallization pattern on graphite.
uh, we found that the macrocrystals exhibited the ability to efficiently kill two types of bacterial cells, despite being quite different to the non appealate pattern formed on the surfaces of insect wings. The asymmetrical nanosheets with uh, sharp nano edges on hydrothermally treated titanium surfaces represent another example of third class of mechanobactericidal surfaces. Um, schematic here showing the formation of uh, crystallite nanosheets with the self-organized asymmetric uh, rays of sharp nano edges. Representative scanning electron micrographs of titanium substrata demonstrate the growth of nanostructures fabricated at various time points, where we can distinguish three stages of nanosheet self-organization. Um, uh, the morphological changes of a nanostructure titanium substrata fabricated by hydrothermal etching are closely correlated with the bactericidal activity and is a function of um, a treatment time. Uh, comparative quantification of bactericidal activity of titanium substrata um, revealed uh, that uh, the uh, treatment time of six hours was uh, uh, resulting in uh, the most bactericidal morphology um, uh, and, uh, and killing effect uh, against uh, staph aureus. One last point to make in the context of bactericidal nanostructured surfaces is that these surfaces are also killing antibiotic resistant bacterial cells. In this work, we use a methicillin resistant staph aureus and uh, methicillin susceptible staph aureus strains on non structured titanium surfaces under standard physiological condition. The absence, uh, in the absence of antibiotics, both um, uh, staph aureus strains are viable. And uh, um, in the presence of antibiotics, methicillin susceptible uh, strain was found to be non viable, while methicillin resistant strain remained viable. And on bactericidal hydrothermal treated titanium surfaces, both staph aureus strains were found to be equally affected without. Um, uh, or with the presence of antibiotics. In summary, the favorable position held by mechanobactericidal nanostructures over conventional chemical-based antimicrobial agents originates from their physico-mechanical interactions with bacteria. The mechanobactericidal mode of action can effectively be categorized into three categories the nanostructure induced stretching by rigid nano features and hence stretching induced by the release of mechanical energy by high aspect ratio flexible nano features and the formation of pores or cuts through the uh, bacterial cell membrane by sharp nano edges nature and the forces involved in the initial interactions of bacterial uh, with surfaces uh, remains not fully understood. Future directions in the field of innovative mechanobactericidal surfaces are towards design and fabrication of multifunctional biomimetic micro and nanostructured surfaces that will be able to repel and kill bacterial cells. As always, I would like to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, my long-standing colleagues, um, uh, Professor uh, Russell Crawford, in, uh, in particularly now also at RMIT, um, many, many colleagues at Swinburne University of Technology, also Helmut Thyssen in Cicero, current and former student, and uh, lots of other brilliant academics. And this um, slide is just a um, some working moments um, in the lab are captured, um, and that's 
all from me for today. Thank you very much to all for listening. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much, very much for standing present and also a body of work. I think, um, you, you are clear one of the world leaders on this aspect of anti rural surfaces. So we have the opportunity to. Uh, have some some questions. I see, there's a couple of questions I'll ask shortly. But those of you who are interested in asking a question, please um, put them into the live uh, Q and A box um, at the top of your your screen. So let me uh, firstly ask the um, uh, question from. It's an anonymous question. Um, and it relates to um, we're just getting rid of relates to uh, a resistance buildup. And the, the question is, do you think um, that bacteria will uh, develop resistance buildup um, uh, because of this uh, mechanical um, disruption or destruction that takes place? Mm. Um, that is a very important question. And um, now, well, what can I say that uh, we limited with the nanostructured um, uh, no, with the fabric with the nanofabrication to achieve the most efficient bactericidal uh, pattern. And uh, in case it's a highly active uh, bactericidal activity and the cells, nearly 100% cells, are killed on this pattern, uh, clearly there is no chance for bacterial cells to achieve um, and develop uh, the resistance to these surfaces. Also because they are getting the dead on the surfaces very quickly. Uh, what we um, estimated previously and also in this um, recent work uh, published in nanoscale, again, depends on the nature of the nanopattern, depends on the geometry of, of the nanopattern. The um, uh, cell can die on the surface within 20 to 40 minutes. So basically, that could be not even enough time to uh, multiply for the cell. And uh, that's why it will not be able to develop any resistance. Uh, however, if the pattern is not 100% uh, de deadly or lethal to bacterial cells, perhaps the, survival, the surviving cells may, um, may develop. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> So our target is to design and use only highly bactericidal patterns to avoid resistance. Thanks, Elena. I, I guess it's an, an unknown, and, and we'll we'll find out uh, as we as we move along um, whether there's any other ways of uh, bacteria building up resistance. So we, we have a question from uh, Andrew Clayton. He firstly says, uh, "Fantastic work." And then he's asking, uh, have you tested other types of cells, for example, blood cells or cancer cells with <coughs> these structures? Um, yes, I just didn't include any um, um, any work, any published work already um, in the context of uh, eukaryotic cells response on nanostructure surfaces. Uh, it's quite remarkable that Actually, nanostructured surfaces enhancing the um, proliferation of uh, eukaryotic cells, attachment and proliferation of eukaryotic cells. They are not deadly um, for these large cells. So, um, but probably next time I'll uh, go into more details and tell you <laughs> all about eukaryotic cells' response on nanostructured surfaces. Okay, thanks, Elena. 
So the, the next question is from uh, Chiara Neto from the University of uh, Sydney. Welcome, Chiara. It's great that you could join us for the same seminars. So uh, Chiara says, thank you for the talk, Elena. And you may have, um, no, I don't think you have answered this, but the first question is, what is the longest period over which you have tested the bactericidal function? Um, uh, you're uh, referring to the durability of the cells. Um, as we showed in this uh, work published in Nanoscale, that the um, in um, one and a half, two and a half hours, the dead cells, uh, the debris of the dead cells are detached from the uh, nanostructure surfaces. Basically, it's not built up by the dead cells. But again, I think it's all the matter of the geometry of a specificity of the nanopattern. So that means that we have to be extremely careful when we design the nanostructure surface and want to uh, apply it, especially if in uh, biomedical applications so that we are not compromising the performance of um, implantable biomaterials. Great. Um, Chiara it said she's also interested in what happens once a complete biofilm of dead bacteria uh, coats the sharp features. So the question is, won't subsequent bacteria be able to attach on the dead layer. I think you might have just touched on that. But, um, I think I just uh, uh, trying to deliver the message that yeah. uh, dead bacteria, the debris of dead bacterial cells are not um, built up on the nanostructured surfaces. But what you have to also to keep in mind that um, the um, loading capacity of the nanostructure surfaces could be a limitation factor. So, of course, when we work in the lab with this um, huge density of bacterial cells, which are millions of cells, right? And then, of course, if we put millions and billions of bacterial cells on the one by one centimeter surface, of course, eventually it will be loaded. So uh, I think what we have to keep here in mind to have a realistic estimation of uh, the surface area, which will be um, effective towards certain density of bacterial cells. But that's the work we have to do. <laughs> that's not established yet. Yeah. Uh, Elena, I had a, a sort of similar question because you, you have these, if we talk about the nanopillar stuff, if you have uh, spaces between the nanopillars, um, do you see any evidence of, say, low molecular weight species, fragments of proteins, or even the, the debris you talk about filling up in between mm. the pillars? And so, so the idea would be, would you slowly fill up these structures and then eventually they'll lose their their ability to be flexible in, in a way. Mm. Um, another important aspect of nanostructured bactericidal surfaces. Uh, well, uh, we really published only two papers um, in the context of protein adsorption um, and protein interactions with nanostructured surfaces. And we use typical uh, proteins as uh, uh, albumin and fibronectin. Uh, what happens, um, and it was one work was a, uh, just a theoretical um, analysis of the saturation of the nanostructure surfaces with the proteins, and another was experimental one, also with the um, IFM um, uh, analysis. So what happened is that, in fact, the proteins are built up um, I'm so sorry, I have this slide. I didn't include that in the presentation. Uh, the proteins, in particular albumin, instead of building up inside the nanopillars, actually uh, building on the tips of the nanopillars. So from what we um, uh, found, it was not that they build up the spaces in between the nanopillars. But I should uh, say that of course, more work is required, and uh, this work is underway in um, uh, our group. So hopefully we will publish this work soon. <laughs> Great. So so we, we have a question from uh, Awas. Uh, Awas says, uh, great talk, Elena. And 
Maybe you've answered this. How long time hours or days do the various nanosurface features kill or prevent bacterial slash uh, cell attachment to these surfaces? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't uh, say that uh, what you see in the context of nanostructure surfaces is some sort of perpetuum mobile, uh, and uh, these perfect surfaces are not existing. And again, like I said, it all depends on the balance, on the concentration of bacterial surfaces and the uh, nano pattern on, on, on the surface. So the highly efficient nanostructured surfaces will be handling certain uh, density of bacterial cells quite quickly. Even in our first work on Cicada, we established the uh, um, um, this cycle when the, cell, uh, the surfaces are getting saturated and then they are um, released from the debris and uh, working again. Um, and I think it was something like in the range of 40 minutes, but that in the context of uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Cicada wing. And you should remember that that particular pattern, um, which is on Cicada wing, is highly efficient as killing up to 100% of um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa cells. So <coughs> in this kind of studies, you have to keep in mind the bactericidal efficiency of a particular pattern and the density of bacterial cells you are trying to um, estimate the uh, you know the durability or uh, you know longevity of this surface okay great so the the next question is from peter Mann. Uh, thanks for joining peter and i see you've recovered from the football last last friday I'm sure it was an exciting game for you good luck this week um, so Peter's question is, do certain patterns and scales work better for different shaped bacteria? Absolutely, Peter, absolutely. Again, I didn't touch, it's, uh, you know, what we know, um, uh, we just only um, touch the tip of the iceberg in the context of mechanobactericidal surfaces. Yes, there are different uh, geometry of the cell where they have uh, contact points with the nanostructure surfaces. And uh, that's also a challenge to kill um, uh, spherical bacteria such as Staphylococcus aureus. Not only <coughs> they are highly um, um, rigid as being gram positive, but also they are spherical. So, but yes, this kind of work we did not um, publish yet. Right. Okay. Yeah, the answer is yes, it does matter what kind of pattern and what kind of a geometry of the cell you're dealing with. Uh, Elena, I just a follow up to that. I think it's mm -hmm. a fascinating idea. Um, as you know, um, in, a, in a real environment, you, you actually have more than one type of bacterial species present. So have you actually where you've looked at mixed communities, say Staph aureus and Pseudomonas together, and seen whether there's any selective killing, or whether there's a universal pattern that can kill everything? Well, this is this is fantastic <laughs> type of work, which is yet to be done. Yeah, I think that's something we have to do. No, it was not done. But, and to my knowledge, nobody else attempted to do that as yet. And again, the, the challenge there to use the highly bactericidal pattern, the highly efficient bactericidal pattern. Otherwise, it's, uh, the, you know, it's not, Good. it's not worth it, it's not worth it. But I would say that uh, we did run experiments on competitive colonization of uh, nanostructure surfaces where we use bacterial cells and eukaryotic cells. And uh, what we found is that the uh, eukaryotic cells will successfully um, colonize the surfaces which were pre-infected with pathogenic bacteria. So this okay. in real work is now underway in this area. <coughs> That, that's fascinating. I, I see we don't have any more um, questions in the chat. I, I, I do have a, a couple of questions and we I think we have a few minutes left. So the, the first question I had is a, a lot of the materials you're using and perhaps a lot of the structures you're making are potentially photocatalytic. 
So my question is, have you noticed whether there is a photocatalytic effect that might be contributing to the suicidal um, properties? Mm. Uh, well, because uh, we um, incubate the surface, we're trying to um, run evaluation of bactericidal performance of different nanopatterns at the same conditions, experimental conditions. Usually we conduct incubation in the dark. So that's why I believe we eliminate the uh, possibility of photocatalytic activity on some particular surfaces. Mm. But of course, if there is a, a photocatalytic effect, that would be more advantageous. Isn't it? Absolutely, uh, definitely, uh, definitely, uh, definitely. But again, it depends on the application. So what you target uh, as a final product, I would say, after the uh, establishing the fundamental aspect of uh, this effect. But I agree, I agree, of course, it will be enhanced bactericidal efficiency, which we would like to achieve as much as possible. So I can't see any more questions. So I, I'll ask one last one. Um, so in, in all the cases, and, and this is with everyone working in antimicrobial, antibacterial surfaces, in all your, your work, you, you never see 100% bacteria being killed or eliminated from the surface. So it might be 99.9, .9, something like that, but there's still there's still some bacteria that manage to attach and survive. So, so the question I have is two questions. The first question is why is that the case? And secondly, is that an issue if you're using it as an implant? Having some left over? Uh, well, again, I think it's a matter, you know, we all working around so-called infectious doses of uh, pathogenic bacteria. So only when uh, pathogens reach certain density, they can trigger the, uh, the kind of immune response uh, of the body is not is not capable of fighting with these huge numbers of bacterial cells. So all I'm saying that if we have an implant and just only some residual cells are left, they will be killed by immune uh, defense by the body. I think that should not be any harm. <laughs> but once again, it's just my thoughts <laughs> and hope, but I don't know for sure. Okay. No. And, and w w one last question for me, we could talk all day, but I'll, I'll ask one more and then I think we're, we're done. So the, I think you, you talked a little bit about the number of bacteria you put into the suspension. So of course you don't want to overload the, the surfaces. So the, the question I have relates to the, the bacterial um, signaling. Do you think there's any signaling that goes on um, from bacteria that actually attach to these surfaces? Do you think they signal anything to planktonic bacteria that may change the way they want to attach and form biofilms? <clears throat> uh, I think that's the same question related uh, to the uh, whether or not uh, the uh, um, resistance to these cells could be uh, developed by the cells. I think it's all the matter of time. Um, if the cell is killed so quickly, I don't think there will be enough time to communicate and signal the cell not to attach. Um, so I don't know, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, probably it requires a lot of um, um, experimental design to establish what is happening with the cells, but it's something, again, we didn't look at yet. So I don't have answer to this question. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, 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 there's a lot a lot of uh, things that that come from this. Mm. Okay, um, thank you very much, Elena, for a fantastic um, uh, s uh, presentation and also a great Q and A session. Thank you, everyone, for your for your great questions. Thank you for so, having me. Thank you for the questions. They're really really interesting ones. Really interesting ones. Yeah. So yeah, we hope to see you again soon, hopefully face to face. <laughs> and um, yeah, once again, 
thanks a lot and, and thanks to Vesna for arranging it and also Adam for uh, for coordinating the session. So definitely. Thank you, the Vesna, Adam, Peter for uh, uh, charming chairing <laughs> the session. Thank you. And, and thanks to everyone for, for attending. I hope you you can make everyone the next. Too. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.